good. Now I gotta get it off my chest. I'm not lying. I hope the Blessed Man Shaitan Rahim. Bismillah, Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum, peace. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum, peace. Alhamdulillah, and Ramadan Mubarak. Okay. Yeah, I'm really happy. I hope I do justice to this wonderful topic. Uh, and I'm satisfied whether I say anything at all that is of real use or you take it back and, ben or, and benefit from it or not. Because this Ramadan session has shown the true value of us continuing these sessions and following in the footsteps of our leader, Imam Muhammad Muhammad. And uh, the true uh, nature of the uh, of, of Ramadan has come out in the spirit in a scholarly manner, you see, and that's what uh, that's that's the true leader. The true leader is the intellectual leader. And Prophet Muhammad was one that said, "The pen is mightier than the sword." So for African Americans, this is why we have so much opposition when it comes to supporting. It's the shaitan that plants the seeds in the minds of the believers to say, well, we shouldn't have a unified, uh, or we have this division that Hathi was speaking about the other day in his um, presentation of minds and ideas. One person wants, you know, everybody wants to be the leader, you know. They, they want to be in the role of the, uh, of the God role or, or of what they see as God, but most of us don't have the correct picture of God in the first place, so... We have what well, we were given by the shaitan in the world. And our religion offers us the correction for all of those issues and problems. And they don't believe you because of the language environment that they come from and the hypocrisy that the Satan has put in the hearts of the people. So they don't believe us in our sincerity. Or they, they don't want to believe us. Uh, so we, we have patience uh, and we hope that someday that, uh, that more sincerity and more thought will come into how we deal with one another. Because I think that the, if someone, if believers in our community are having Ramadan sessions or having their functions together, that they should first look in the mirror and be honest with themselves. And you may find that Allah will approve of your reason for not uh, accepting the invitation. That we, we just learn how, need to learn how to respect each other. I would take a, a nice a letter or a card or or even an email or a text saying that because uh, uh, you know about us we put ours in the paper on, we most of you are on our mailing list we uh, Facebook everything so you know we having a Ramadan session uh, let us know that we would love to be there this is what people that respect each other and love each other do but we can't make it because of this and that. Like, I really appreciate the brother that sent the uh, greetings from his Dawah team, letting us know that they couldn't be here. That let me know that they're okay, they're fine, and that we didn't do anything to offend them, that maybe they're not here. Because, not that I would go straight to the negative, but Satan might whisper in my ear, somebody might come to me and say, hey, you know, they over there, they're in competition with y'all. I said, well, we're all in competition, but we should be together in that competition, you know. So, uh, we don't know. Uh, so, don't give in to your weaker desires. Give in, you should uh, uh, give in to the best of your nature. And Allah may show you that you have our support in doing your own thing in your locale. It might be what's best for you. You see? But Allah says it's better to go out and fight. It's better to go out and struggle than to sit at home and act. You know? And to also sacrifice because Allah will repay you. I'm a witness that, you know, uh, a lot of repays and even material things that you give and, and the spiritual benefit is you know you can't count it and the peace of mind you get so okay alhamdulillah so I pray that Allah that entire community of those that appreciate the uh, life work of Imam W.D. Muhammad and his Ramadan sessions that they're all enjoying a good uh, blessed and successful uh, Ramadan and uh, and if those that are having Ramadan uh, sessions I hope that they are enjoying the best of Allah's mercy and that their blessings are being multiplied for their good efforts and that much good comes out of 
whatever it is that they're doing, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, Prophet Muhammad. This is a topic because we got heavyweights all over the country, but Allah is the one who inspires the heart of the believer. So, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what attracted me to see the par when I started seeing the parallel of the advancement of technology in uh, our society and in science, I was seeing uh, things that the that the people were speaking highly of that Prophet Muhammad had established in the Muslim Ummah um, since uh, since the Islam was first established that uh, a lot of the practices that uh, Muslim that are uniquely Muslim practices are coming around and the, the Christian uh, are accepting and embracing and conforming themselves to some of that uh, that uh, those practices like the inner faith uh, you see Christians enjoying and then loving inner, inner faith uh, mostly the Caucasian ones I, you, a lot of African Americans don't show up to a lot of them but those that do come they accept the peace because um, they all you know we all have our different opinions on our outlooks but I've never went to an interface gathering an interface program where it appeared that any of the different faiths were at odds with each other or in competition and uh, I, I had witnessed one where Imam Muhammad uh, seemed to be getting picked on and the rest of the group could feel it. He was getting picked on by, uh, sound like a Hindu. And Imam Muhammad said a few words and he got what sound like a standing ovation from a group of scholars and doctors and scientists and people of all different races, mostly Caucasian, were in the room, you know. And uh, I've been repeating it ever since. He they asked the person, well, because this, you know, they worship a a God that's smaller than the one we believe in. So he was saying that, well, once you imagine God, then imagine as far as you can imagine in, uh, in the universe. What do you think is behind that? You know, like the sun, the moon, the stars. And then whatever you could imagine, whatever you come up with uh, that's behind that, Allah is bigger than that. And he said, and if you can think of something, but behind that, he said, Allah is bigger than that. You know, but the way he said it, it was so, so eloquent and there was just nowhere for them to go that every, everybody in the room wanted to defend him. But because he defended himself in such a beautiful way, their emotions burst out simultaneously. Y'all probably heard that tape. Okay, yes, yes. so I got to right, stop doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so I went like several years telling people that. I said, well, what do you think? Think, imagine how big God is. Mm. It, how big the material reality. I said, Allah created all this materiality for us. This is the world he created for us to explore, right. mm -hmm. for our intellect to grow. Right. And uh, that's why, you know, it's just such a beautiful and wonderful thing. And that the more you look at his creation, the more it feeds your intellect. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was watching a, a, a co television commercial the other day. And I said, there's so much. Oh, I, I, uh, we make ablution. Uh, and there's so many things you can do to break your ablution, especially going out in the street. So you, you come home and make and clean yourself, make a wudu. So when uh, we wash uh, for prayer, uh, when I was young, my father always said, sniff the water. And you know, it burned. You know, so I, I did it. I sniffed, I pouring it, sniffing it, and I sniffed and I say, well, if I get the right amount of moisture in there, and then, you know, I was like, you sip tea, then I would go, sniffing, I would feel it go up in my sinuses. Uh, so, uh, then I discovered, I never had allergies or anything like that, but I remember one time I was having like a, uh, maybe I might have been developing allergies, something was irritating me, getting my eyes to burn and all this kind of stuff. And so, I noticed that when I washed my nose out, that uh, I felt better. So, um, and you see people that have hay fever, they sometimes wear masks to keep the, the pollen or the things, the irritants out of, they, out of their nose. And I looked on TV, I said, I hope a Muslim invented this. They got this thing they selling, man, that look like that might hurt. You put it up to your nose, it runs water from one side to the other and flushes your whole head out. And they say, that's to stay healthy. 
I said, wow. I said, Muslims been doing that for 1,400 years. And five times a day, if you break your wudu five times a day. So I'm like, you know, see, so Prophet Muhammad is, is cured. He's virtually cured to hay fever and the common cold. Because <laughs> if you keep your hands clean, your mouth and your, your eyes and ears and, and nose and all that clean, uh, it's highly likely that any bug is going to set up in you and have time to grow to make you sick or cause you to get ill. So that's a, that's a very beautiful thing. And um, the universe, when they discovered the, uh, the black hole, they said they couldn't see it, but they, they got a picture. I took a picture of it and my, my watch broke, but I had put it in my, at a screensaver on my little phone, my little Apple phone. And uh, they drew a picture of the universe, and, I mean of the black hole. And I said, they had pictures before. I said, that looks like us swimming around the car by at Hodge. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said, so how did we get that picture? They had no telescopes that can see that far. You see, they saw the stars in the sky. They, now, they had the best telescopes, the Muslims, uh, after Islam, during the Renaissance, right? They, they were known for, to navigate the, the globe with their, uh, their, their maps, because they, they mapped the skies. And, um, but they didn't have no picture like that. So the Muslims were always dressing in white, right? Mm -hmm. There was no time that they dressed in any other color. It looked, it looked a lot like the solar system. Mm -hmm. And that's a miracle in itself. Mm -hmm. I don't hear nobody talking about that, but that's, that's a miraculous thing. How they had that picture, that's what they should be trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so in my mind, that's, that is a physical uh, witness to Allah's creation. So we bear witness when we make our, uh, you know, circumference the, the uh, holy precincts. We witness to what the order that Allah has created in every solar system. And there's billions of solar systems in our galaxy alone, right? And then they say not only is the galaxy, is the solar system set up with planets swimming in orbit, but the, uh, the light that's coming from the center of galaxies. Every galaxy they believe has a super black hole. The light appears to be the high, the, uh, the uh, you know, the, the, the Hajis. It appears to be the Hajis in their white uh, garments uh, swimming around in the light. And, uh, and then they gave the analogy, I always give this, but this is something real. I haven't heard anybody say anything. That you can't find anything in creation that's like that outside of the human intellect. Uh, the the, what's the, in the middle of the black hole, they say it consumes everything that's in there. Planets, stars, not even light can escape it. In our human nature, in our, in our human existence, the human intellect is one that anything in the material reality, your brain can pick that apart and find use for it or find knowledge of it where we can explain away. A lot told Adam uh, to tell the angels to tell them their name. And Allah didn't give those names to Adam. Adam must have had those names already. You see? So, uh, so that's proof that the human intellect is, uh, is like that. And then when they complain, we say, well, people can, they say they discovered some uh, black holes that are just out there in space that are hundreds of times bigger than, the, than some. And some are small. That's intellects. There's some small minds, there's some big minds. <laughs> and and they, 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 they don't know how them big ones pr were produced, but they think maybe in the early universe, maybe some, some joined together. And they, I think they said they, they, they recorded a record of a collision of two supermassive black holes. And I said, so what happens when we put our minds together? Right. Now we have a super intellect, you know? <laughs> you have a bigger intellect. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what's out there. It's beautiful. Uh, what's out there in the universe, and it's all there. Because if Allah said He put it there to yield His resources to you, doesn't that mean that if you discover something out of space, you're supposed to get something out of it, no matter if you can travel there or not? I got something out of it. I got something out of it. And, uh, and the scientists probably been getting it uh, for a long time. They just don't acknowledge the Quran, that the Quran has explained in great detail. Uh, the, everything that they discover, they can find it already exposed in the Quran, or hinted to in some kind of way. Uh, and the the fact 
that uh, Muslims never shy away from uh, uh, from material establishment and from the things the world is almost uh, like they're crawling up out of the out of the dark primitive mind that they have the dark ages you know and slowly trudging behind the prophet and uh, and to accept the situation I'm trying to explain it without going into uh, the, the situation but you learn from things that happen I wound up in a situation where I had to explain well I had to explain about our life as Muslims. I said, well, Muslims, uh, sex is not something that we giggle about or smirk or snicker about. It's not offensive. It's not vulgar or anything. I said, because we, Allah has given that for our nature, for us to, uh, to, to, re to reproduce, you know, each other, you know, and to have, and so that we can have the, uh, the family life it's a it's really considered half of our obligations as Muslims as believers is to marry and so that we can uh, have a the life that Allah intended so we comp the male and female complement each other and that um, <clears throat> yeah and that so we teach our children I was telling the person I said I teach my children that sex is for married people and because the other day well I can I get that part later uh, that sex is for married people and um, and that people that don't that have sex outside of wedlock it's a punishment it's a sin mm -hmm. you know fornication is a sin it's adultery a is a sin. It's big sin mm -hmm. so 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 Muslims understand that uh, Allah asks us to you know if before we uh, uh, intimate with our wives, husbands or wives, to do something good for our soul, to mem remember Allah, or m make a dua or something, and um, that Allah rewards us, that there's a great blessing in that. So, uh, just as we see a punishment in the sin, Allah didn't just leave us there and say, this is sinful, but much of the world looks at sex as a sin. Uh, the Christian world and uh, some uh, sects of the Jew Jews, they had their uh, their sex is dirty, even with their wives, you know. So uh, uh, that's something that Muslims don't have. We have a very sober approach to that. And um, if they they should have, I would believe that they have some level of sex education in the public schools, that people would be what, much better off. And that we long time ago gave the answer, the solution is to when the children are interested and are curious about the opposite sex, the family and the community start looking for a mate for them. Right. And, and uh, if they uh, think that that mate, they work with the parents to groom that mate to be the best mate for their, ch their child on their family. And the families work together. It's a community effort. Uh, so uh, Prophet Muhammad has really advanced and civilized us in such a manner where I'm sure all of this was taught in public education. His public education was so far advanced that they had to actually uh, start uh, schools. The first, the term university comes from Islam. Uh, I'm not sure it's the language of the term, but I, I'm pretty sure university uh, uh, the, uh, comes from Islam because there, were no, there was no public education before Islam and there were no schools. Yeah, so uh, this, there's so much the freedom the freedom of the individual human rights human rights that's Islam so all of this the, there's leaders that know it but they should rediscover and explore where it started how the world truly came out of the dark ages of ignorance and came into this great civilization that we have in with high science and technology medicine, advancement in medicine. Uh, just that the our ablution, our washing for prayer, that is way more than a ritual. You know, that's science. That's that's really big science. And um, the way we approach societal issues, you know, he said you work with the people, you know, Imam Muhammad, 
when he left, he said, I, I know he didn't think they was going to go all crazy and start making uh, marijuana that they don't understand yet fully. And uh, I, I was watching a program on television. They have synthetic marijuana. They said that's ten times worse than crack or something, you know. And uh, so, it's, you know, to even play with an illegal drug like that, I don't think that's what he meant. He just said that these people that are self-medicating themselves, they do it with alcohol. And they do it with uh, the street drugs and all of that. That uh, you have patient with them. And you hear the immigrant Muslims, oh, we, we, don't, no, we don't bother them people. We, we, uh, you, we accept them. Let them in. Like, yeah, I know. You, yeah, that's the same thing the man in the gambling house wants. He wants you to get drunk and then come and gamble. And I'm like, you know, but so we got we to gotta watch out for them type of people. I'm like, no, you can leave. We can, Elijah Muhammad showed you. We, we know how to deal with our down and out people, our pimps, right. prostitutes, drug addicts, and all that. We clean them up and still clean them up in the prison systems. And we put them back on the, on the path. If they've never been on it, we put them on a straight path. Uh, we don't need the immigrant Muslims to clean up our drunks. They need to clean up their drunks, right. you know. So, uh, but that's, that's another interest that they have. And you got to watch people's motivations, you know, what motivate them. But uh, that was... Uh, uh, the 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 main uh, one of the major focus of the Prophet Muhammad was to take care of the neglected, uh, the people that were left and and rejected by society, uh, to help to clean them up and educate them. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he did a masterful job of following the leadership and uh, uh, that he found in Prophet Muhammad. And uh, he was able to be so successful with it because he was literally, truly following his strategy, his community development, his, his strategy to build community. And that's why he was successful. Uh, uh, Muhammad the Prophet, he, he didn't have any hesitation when he came to following the command of Allah. And he didn't have any question because Allah was communicating directly to him about how to deal with those situations. And he was strictly in following. There was no, there was, there was nothing, no subject or no matter put up for debate. And so Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he had the same situation because he said, yes, I'm talking to Allah, <laughs> you know. So he was successful. But we talking to Allah too. We would have the Quran, you know. So I think we could easily reproduce what we reproduced before if we just follow the the uh the light in the quran that allah and the instruction allah has given to uh prophet muhammad on how to build the model community and structure imam muhammad's it would be nice to see a book put together on uh imam muhammad's instruction or if there might not if there may already be something for building the, uh, he called it New Africa, uh, but yeah, for building New Africa, like a scientific study on how the steps to build New Africa. He told us what New Africa is, but how do we build New Africa, you see? Uh, and if you think about the simple language, Imam, uh, you would hear the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say, uh, the soldiers, y'all have it in your mind. Y'all need to write that stuff down. Where uh, y'all used to go out and say, uh, you know, and ask the person on the street. You didn't just sell him Muhammad speaks, and then he read it from cover to cover, and now he a soldier. You would say, what are you doing to help yourself or to help the black community? Do you know about Elijah Muhammad? He's building a nation. Y'all gonna help us build a nation? That language is the same language uh, that we need today, just in a different, uh, more politically correct way. We still believe in the Muslim Ummah as being the main focus that we're one community and one family we still need uh, to build have establishment and uh, not just material establishment but leadership in the life of the people uh, in the minds of the black independent leadership for black people for the black mind for the african-american mind and we have that in Imam WD Muhammad so like we many of us do we courageously and uh, uh, non-apologetically support the teachings and Imam W. D. Muhammad of, uh, as our leader. So 
Yes, we don't need to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. We put Imam Muhammad out front yes, right. and put his mission out front. Yes, right. First, yes, right. when I greet a person, you have to know first and foremost that I'm a Muslim, I have a leader, and he has a plan that we believe is going to save our black people. Mm -hmm. It's going to save you and me, brother. Mm -hmm. And what you going to do